Hello, I'm Carolyn and a few days ago I received an email request to create a trellis design like this one here. To create this design I'm going to use the grid for drawing my lines. Just get rid of this. So I'm going to click on the last icon at the top here to edit the properties of the document. Then I will click on the grids tab. At the moment it's on rectangular grid. I'm going to change that to axonmetric grid then click on new. Make sure these three boxes here have ticks in them. At the moment the grid units are set at millimetres. I'm going to change mine to centimetres but you work in the units that you're comfortable with. If you look here at angle X and angle Z they're at 30 degrees. I'm going to change them to 45. Then type 45 on the keyboard, press enter. Then I'm going to change angle Z to 45 as well. So just type 45, press enter. Then I can just close the document properties. Then I'm going to zoom in and draw a rectangle. Now I'm only going to be using this rectangle as a guide for drawing all my lines. This dark green is a little bit hard to see, so I'm just going to change it to a lighter colour so I can see the grid lines. I'm just zooming in to show here this is important. You can see here I've got half a diamond all the way across. That's important for when I'm adding the scallops and the same down the side. Have a look around all the corners. Just make sure you've got half a diamond in each corner. Might actually make this a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to draw my lines. So I'll select the Bezier tool and then just come along and draw the lines. This method is great if you're only doing a small trellis. If you're doing a really large one there are other options that might be easier and I will try and do some videos with those options at a later stage. You can see how the rectangle was useful as a guide. Now I'm just going to zoom in to make sure I've got these all correct, which I haven't. I've got a few wrong, so I'll just come and tidy them up. Of course this is rather important because if I get this wrong now, it's going to spoil the design when it's finished. I can now click on the rectangle and delete it. Now I need to select all of these lines. So I'll just hold down the left mouse button, drag the mouse across them all, and then release the mouse button. See here they're all selected, so I'll go Path, Combine. Obviously I've only got half of my trellis design here, so what I'll do is I'll make a duplicate. So I'll go Edit, Duplicate. Then I'm going to click on this icon to flip the object horizontal. See now I've got the trellis looking design. At this stage this will only cut lines in your cardstock. So once again I'm going to select all the parts. Then I'm going to open the fill and stroke menu. Then I'm going to come to the tab stroke style. My width is set on millimeters and I'm going to change it to two. Then press enter. If you look closely here you can see the lines don't meet. That's because the cap is on butt cap. If you change it to square cap, you do get the nice diamond shape. For this design, I'm actually going to leave it on butt cap because I want to add a line across and I don't want to risk the tip of each diamond showing through. I'm going to leave the fill and stroke options open because I do need it for the next part. Now I'm going to draw the scallops across the top. To do that, I'm going to start by drawing a circle. Don't worry too much about the size at the moment. Then come over to the fill and stroke options. Click on flat colour. I'm just going to change this to a different colour so that when I'm putting the scallops on I can see them more clearly. Then go to the fill tab, click on the cross to turn the fill off. I can see here that I've still got a full circle. To change it to a half circle, I'm just going to come to this little circular shape node here and move it around till I've got half a circle. It's the wrong direction, so I'll click on the Select tool and then click on this icon to flip the object vertical. 
and I can come along and put my scallop in. Now I've got my scallop design in place, I need to make this thicker to match these lines. So I'll come back to stroke style and I'm going to change that to 2 to match the other lines. Just zooming out, what I need to do is duplicate this all the way along. One of the easiest ways I find is to hold down the left mouse button and hit the space bar and it gives you a duplicate. Then hit the space bar again, hit the space bar, You may have noticed that they were dropping very neatly into place. That's because I've still got the grid on and I've got it on snap to grids. So if it doesn't drop neatly into place, you can just come and change it by clicking on this little icon here, snap to grids. It just makes life easier. At this stage, the design looks very messy, but I'm going to put a border around this black lattice here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Not too worried about the size again at the moment. In Stroke Paint, I'm going to click on Flat Color, go to the Fill tab, turn the fill off, come to Stroke Style, and I'm going to change it to 2mm to match all my other lines. Now I can move the rectangle to where I want it to be. If you find this is happening, where it won't go in in the increments you want, come up here to this little grid and click on it to turn the snapping off. now move it wherever you want it to be. Just zoom in, come to the other side. If you can't get this quite perfect here, you can just tidy up the nodes when you finish. I'll just turn grid off just so we can see the finalisation of it. Now these are all stroke lines. I'll just show you in outline mode. They're straight lines. Now if I try to cut this out at the moment, I will just get those cuts in the paper. So I'll just drag the mouse around, select them all. Then I'm going to go path, stroke to path. And if you watch the design, you'll see it change. See how those lines have all thickened? And of course at the moment, these are still all separate parts. So then I'll go path, union. You can see we've now got a design suitable for cutting. Actually, no we don't. We've got a few little messy bits here. So I'll just come along and just delete those. See them here? I'll just get rid of those. And here we are, the finished design ready for cutting out. I will be adding this actual cutting file here to my blog as a downloadable file. My blog is at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.